Words are like onions. As you start to unwrap them, <laughs> you find lots of new layers. A bit like a new wife or a new husband. <laughs> oh, and they make you cry too. But in English, for example, the verb to have, do you know what it means? Do you know all of the layers? Really? Well, let's find out. Hello, this is Keith. Um, I run the website, the Keith Speaking Academy, as well as this YouTube channel, English Speaking Success. Also, you can check out my other channel to learn English in under a minute. Yes, English Speaking Success Shorts. So, as I'm sure you know, some words in English are extremely common. We use them all the time, right? In a recent video, we looked at the verb to get and all of the different meanings and uses of it. Now, did you know the verb to have is the eighth most frequent word in English? And yet it has lots of different meanings. When you begin learning English, you learn the basics. But as you improve, you have to start unwrapping and discovering the deeper meanings of these simple words. If not, you'll never get the flexibility you need to be a fluent and confident speaker. Today, we're going to have a look at some of the different uses of the verb to have to get you that flexibility, fluency and confidence. We're going to look at have meaning possession, um, have describing activities and have in idiomatic expressions. Let's do it. Just a quick reminder, knowledge is not enough. So in addition to listening to me today, you need to be practicing your English. You can practice on your own, but for me, one of the best ways to practice is with a teacher. So you can get feedback and have somebody correcting your mistakes. When you get feedback, it helps you to learn the words more deeply, right? To get to know the layers. Remember the onion? <laughs> And I think one of the best platforms for practicing with a teacher is Cambly. If you don't know it, Cambly is an online platform specialized in teaching English with native English speaking teachers. I'm going to tell you a lot more about that shortly, as well as some great discounts for you. But for now, let's have a look at that verb to have. So first of all, we can say to have, meaning to possess or to own something, right? It's ours, right? For example, I have a pen. I have a phone. I have a dog. Oh, no, I don't. I haven't got a dog. <laughs> I used to have a dog when I was younger, but now I haven't got a dog. It's interesting, right? You'll notice for possession um, in America, they tend to say have, I have a pen. Um, in British English, we tend to say have got, I've got, I've got a pen, right? In the negative, um, well, American would be I have a black pen, I don't have a blue pen. And in British, it would be I've got a black pen, I haven't got a blue pen. Of course, we can describe ourselves with things that we have, right? I have a, a big nose. It's true. I have blue eyes. I have ginger hair. Well, all right. Grey hair. Greyish gingerish hair. <laughs> um, common mistake. Some people say, I have got a black hair. No, I've got black hair. If you say, I've got a black hair, that's like one hair, right? <laughs> now, you may say in the restaurant, Oi, waiter. I've got a black hair in my soup. See the difference? Also, have can be for describing our personality, right? Um, she has a bad temper. If we say she has a bad temper, it means that she's always angry, always flying off the handle, <laughs> always flying off the handle, 
right? She has a bad temper um, or she has a nasty temper. On the contrary, the opposite, right? Um, she has a calm manner or she has a lovely manner. And that just means that she speaks in a calm and polite way, right? She has a very calm manner. You have a lovely manner. Slightly different from to have good manners in the plural, right? He has good manners means he's well behaved. Um, she has bad manners means she's rude or impolite. Also, we can talk about sicknesses that we have or own, right? Um, so if I have, I have a cold, <coughs> I have a cough, um, oof, I have a fever, oh, I have a stomach ache, oh, I've got a headache. Oh dear, get to the hospital. <laughs> As my mum would say to me, she says, oh dear, you are in the wars. Yeah, to be in the wars, to have lots of injuries or sicknesses. So that's have with possession. Let's move on before I do go to the hospital. Now, a common use of to have is when it means to do an activity. For example, we may say to have a shower, right? The activity, having a shower or have a wash, right? I like to have a wash. Notice because it's not possession, we don't say have got, no, have, right? Have a shower, have a wash. Other examples, have a rest. In Spanish, they have this word siesta, have a siesta, which we also say in English. Have a siesta, have a rest, have a lie down, have a nap, have a snooze, have a power nap, have 40 winks. <laughs> there, are, there are so many expressions to have a rest. We must love resting in England. Oh, it's good for you, right? Every day, I do have a siesta every day. 20 minutes, no more, no less, perfect. I do it religiously on a daily basis. Also, we've got have plus a noun replacing a verb. So you may have a verb, for example, like um, to look, but you can replace that with have a look. What's the difference? Well, look, right? If I say, hey, look, look, it's quite direct, right? But hey, have a look. It's just softer. It's a bit more inviting. Look is the imperative, so it's a bit direct, but have a look is a little bit softer, a little bit more inviting, right? Have a look. Other examples, listen, I've got some great music. Have a listen, right? Or what about this lovely puar tea? Have a taste, right? Yeah, have a bite to eat. I've got a lovely onion, have a bite. <laughs> no thanks, have a smell. Ugh. So you can have a, have a taste, have a bite, have a smell, um, have a think, have a ponder, means to think. Yeah, have a ponder and let me know tomorrow. Have a try, have a go, both of those meaning to try. So if I wanna be a bit softer, go on, yeah, have a try, go on, have a go. I want to encourage my students to practice, right? And finally, we've got meals with have. Notice this is a common mistake, right? A lot of people say, I have a breakfast in the morning. No, there's no a. I have breakfast in the morning. I have lunch at midday and I, ha the, 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 and I have dinner in the evening. All of them without a. Excellent. We're going to move on and have a look at some really nice idiomatic expressions with have. Before we do that, there's a quick break. Come and join me by the uh, water cooler. Hello, come and join me by the water cooler. Let's have a drink. So I've got coffee, I've got tea, I've got water. <laughs> um, have a look. I've got some puar tea, right? Would you like to have a taste? Great, okay. So listen, I hope you're enjoying the video and learning lots. We're unwrapping the word have, right? Now, this is really good, but what's really important is that you start practicing. You can practice with me in the video, of course, but a great idea 
is to find a teacher. And I want to tell you a bit more about one of my favorite platforms for teaching, which is Cambly, right? If you don't know Cambly, they're an online platform with native English teachers. And when you sign up, you get to choose your teacher. You can choose the time you want to study, the content of the course, um, and you can even record the course so you can watch it later and play back. And there are flexible plans for everybody. And the most important thing to tell, to tell you today is about the discounts. So if you want to try out Cambly, you can use the code in the link below. That's Keith-YT. And you can have a free 10 minutes to try out the teacher and the platform. And if you like it, you can get a 40% discount when you sign up for the year plan, the 12 month plan. For me, learning a language, it's a long term investment. And I think Cambly gives you the perfect opportunity to invest in the long term. So check out the links down below and remember to use the code Keith-YT. Excellent. Now let's check out some of those exciting idiomatic expressions with have. So in this section about useful idiomatic expressions, um, we're going to listen to a friend of mine, Stan, talking about a day out he had um, at the cinema with a friend of his, Tim. What I want you to do is to listen first and to count how many idioms with to have does he use. Here we go. Yo, Stan the man, checking in, in it. The other day, right? I had time to kill, so I got in touch with my mate Tim, yeah, who, it turns out, also had time on his hands. And we decided to go to the cinema to see a new film. Now, listen, I have a bone to pick with Tim because he chose the last film we went to see and it was utter rubbish. He doesn't have a clue when it comes to choosing a good film. All Tim thinks about is fast action, special effects. He's got a one-track mind, right? So that film, right, was, was an action film with that um, Sylvester Stallone. That's the one, yeah? Now, even Tim said it was absolutely shocking. So this time, I had the upper hand, right? I was going to choose the film. Fortunately... Tim said he was going to pay, you know, he has money to burn. And that was great because cinema tickets these days cost an arm and a leg. <laughs> anyway, we agreed on a comedy this time and it was great. We had a whale of a time. Tim had a blast and he said he hadn't laughed so much in ages. What a lovely day. Great so how many idioms with to have did you count? Aha, well, actually there were nine. Let's have a look at them and just see what they mean. So first of all, we had to have time to kill. Um, so Stan said he had time to kill, which just means to have spare time or free time to do something. Similarly, to have time on your hands, or Tim had time on his hands means the same, to have free time. Notice we can change the pronoun, right? I have time on my hands. Tomorrow you will have time on your hands, possibly. Um, then what came up to have a bone to pick with someone. A bone is kind of the, obviously the bone in the body. Um, so a chicken has different bones, the chicken bone, chicken on the bone, right? So if you have a bone to pick with someone, it means you have a reason to disagree with them or to be angry with them. And you'll remember Stan was angry with Tim because Tim had chosen such a rubbish film. So Stan had a bone to pick with him, right? Next, he doesn't have a clue. Or if you're British, he hasn't got a clue. <laughs> we can use both, right? Basically, it means he doesn't know. He doesn't have a clue about good films, right? He doesn't know anything about good films. 
Next up, to have a one-track mind. So Tim had a one-track mind because he was always thinking about the same thing. Um, if you're always thinking about action films, you have a one-track mind. Um, if you're always thinking about food, you have a one-track mind, right? We don't say about something. We just say he, ha he has a one-track mind, right? You're always talking about eating. You have a one-track mind. <laughs> okay. And next, to have the upper hand. So here, because Tim had made a mistake and he knew it, Sam had the advantage. He could choose the film. So to have an advantage over someone is to have the upper hand, right? So Stan has the upper hand this time. Moving on. If you've got lots of money, you've got money to burn, right? To have plenty of money to spend. Um, so apparently Tim has money to burn, right? He has plenty of money. And this often suggests you can spend that money on unimportant things. Finally, two expressions meaning to enjoy yourself a lot, to have a whale of a time, to have a blast. So both Stan and Tim had a whale of a time and they had a blast. That's it. Nine useful expressions with to have. Now, remember, just knowing these phrases is not enough to become fluent and a confident speaker, right? And also to get a band seven or above in IELTS speaking. There's a difference between knowledge and knowing. Knowledge is good, but knowing is important. And by that, I mean being able to use these words and phrases. And a great way to develop your knowing is to use Cambly. Cambly is an online learning platform and they've got native English speakers that can help you build up your fluency and confidence. You can start practicing these phrases today. And do notice that Cambly also have some pre-prepared courses, including IELTS, that you can study and practice with your teacher. If you want to try Cambly, there's a code in the description below the video. The code is Keith, K-E-I-T-H dash Y-T. And um, with that code, um, you can get a 10 minute free class on Cambly. And if you like it, you can then sign up for a, a full year plan and get 40% discount, four zero. Fantastic. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Get on Cambly right now and start practicing. So listen, if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video, which shows you lots of different meanings of the word get, another very common English word. You can unwrap the onion of get, right? Please do remember, press the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, um, and also leave me a comment. Tell me, what are you going to have today? <laughs> Take care and I will see you in a few moments in the next video. All right, Stan, so what are you having? I'll have a coffee, mate. So nice video that to have. Well, yeah, it's such an important word, right? Sure, yeah, but the onion, what was that all about? Well, it's a metaphor. A meta what? A metaphor. It shows students how words can have different meanings and layers. Oh, so you're not telling students they need to eat onions? No, Stan. Ah, I see. I've got it. Yeah. Well, nice video, mate. Yeah. See you next time. Yeah, see you Cheers. now. Cheers.